Yo, so it's another video. Hey, how's it going? So, um, you know, this time around, because I'm like starting medical school and I'm generating a lot of attention with my, my AR stuff and just in the areas of education, I feel like I'm talking to big corporations and companies and entities like every week. At this point, like things are just wild. Like it's cool, but I always, I always enjoy the opportunity to be able to tap in with the community and, and provide like hope and stuff for for people that you know that look like me, right? And and that's what it it's all about for me. It's being able to uh, provide hope to those that just didn't see themselves represented in these types of spaces, or they didn't see they just don't have access to. To people you know that are doing things and 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 inspiring in ways you know I think just that that level of personal connection is so valuable because you know whenever we have problems and you try to like get tech support you you instantly are pressing like zero you know to talk to a person and uh, with COVID and everything just being able to talk to people and then connecting with people on on this personal level is uh, I think it's a luxury. It's a luxury for, uh, it's a luxury for all of us at this point, right? When was the last time you touched somebody that didn't, you know, that you weren't related to, you know, just a simple handshake uh, is what COVID took away from us. And, you know, it, I, I had the opportunity to, you know, inspire people now because of my story and because of the stuff that I've been doing. And so before I dive deep into that, right, uh, this is a, I had the opportunity to speak at the African American Youth Leadership Council and conference and um, out here in Oregon. And it was just, a, it was just a great opportunity, right? Like there's, you know, over a hundred black students that, uh, that timed in, you know, with their parents and, and teachers and educators uh, some people that I, you know, used to play with and, and was connected with um, and some people that I sort of, you know, grew up aspiring to be like were involved in it. And it, it was a great opportunity. I ended up being the keynote speaker, which is sort of crazy. Um, I feel like I'm still trying to, like, figure out my, you know, my path. And so being able to share where I'm at was a, you know, it was a great opportunity and, you know, a true honor in many ways. And so, you know, the theme of it was, you know, I am my ancestor's wildest dream. And with everything that's been happening and me understanding my history uh, in this country, uh, it, it's it definitely that definitely resonated with me. And so uh, check out the presentation. Hopefully you enjoy it. Um, and from there, you know, I just I just want to see black people just being on the on the on the better side of this, especially having a, a year that 2020 had, you know, I want to see 2021, you know, being the the excuse for black people to thrive in this in this nation. And so with that, you know, check it out. Uh, can everybody see the PowerPoint or at least see some of the slides? Yeah, you're in good shape. You look good, Steve. OK, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So. Uh, so hello, my name is Stephen Christian. I am out here in Portland, Oregon. Uh, loving the wonderful weather that we have if you're out in portland you'll know exactly what i'm talking about uh, but uh with it woo. Oh, yep. <laughs> uh but um with it i will be talking about uh how i am my ancestors wildest dreams uh and so with this um me i'm a content creator uh i'm a producer i am an entrepreneur uh, I am, I guess my new role will be a medical student in the fall, which is uh, really, really exciting. Uh, and for the most part, what I do is I just, you know, make stuff, put it on the internet, uh, share my ideas and, and try to build community. And more importantly, I try to, with my work, I try to bridge the gaps between inequities that we see, uh, particularly with, uh, with black and brown communities. And so I think I, uh, am fortunate enough to be able to navigate many spaces that don't necessarily see us in mind and uh and the privilege and the honor that i have is that i get I to my headset. 
uh, I've had the privilege and honor to actually uh, open the doors for more people like us. And so, uh, and so it's a great honor. It's a great responsibility. And uh, it comes with a lot of roles, right? Like uh, in many ways, um, I'm, a, I'm a retired football player. I'm an animator. I'm a college instructor. I teach at Portland Community College. Uh, I'm a STEAM educator. Uh, and that just means that I work in the sciences and uh, in technology and arts. Uh, I make comics, you know, going to be a medical student, entrepreneur, youth mentor, writer. Uh, in the tech space, my official title is a full stack augmented reality mobile developer, uh, which is, a, it's just a mouth, a mouthful, but, uh, but essentially it just means that I, I innovate and I build communities and I, uh, create things that have impacts across a variety of different industries. Um, interestingly enough, like I went to school as a psychology major and I played football. You know, so I would say that I was a very stereotypical sort of, uh, I took a very a traditional route for, for black males in, uh, in education where you, you know, go to school, you play, and then you sort of get your degree and then you go out into the world. It just so happens that the things that I did when I went out into the world um, were very creative. And so I, I tried to, um, you know, just really think outside the box to just solve a lot of problems. And so essentially, in a, in a nutshell, I make, I consider myself just a creator that just makes cool stuff. And so this is one of the, one of the projects that I'm kind of working on right now. And I will actually just share what it looks like. And what that is is essentially augmented reality. And so, if you're if we're talking about like Snapchat filters, if we're talking about uh, 3D animation, uh, innovation, things that are really like at the cutting edge, uh, I operate in that space. And um, in many ways, I'm one of the very few creators that are uh, exploring black storytelling with innovative technology. And so, uh, and so, a lot of the stuff that I do is really focused around my black identity and being able to share that with technology opposed to shying away from it through technology, which is what we've sort of seen in the past. And so what I do is I try to really address that uh, directly with the work that I do and be unapologetic about it. And I think that that takes a level of, um, it takes a level of courage in, in many ways because you, you're understanding that the things that you put out may have negative consequences but um, I'm willing to take on those consequences because of the because of the convictions that I have with the level of work that I do, and uh, and I think that you know that that is very liberating in times, uh, especially in the climate that we're in now, where we're starting to see a um, you know just people just being more outspoken about their experiences um, as it pertains to uh, just existing as Black people in this country, and so. Um, one of the things that I've grown to learn and appreciate as we're talking about sort of histories and ancestors and stuff is really legacy. And, uh, and so like for me, being black is really, it really comes with that rich cultural history and tradition, but it also comes with that, that realization, that, that acknowledgement of the consequences that, that has sort of led us to this point. And uh, as a creator, I really, really think about that. And especially going into the field of medicine now, like that is more on my, like more on my, um, you know, more on the top of my mind now, because what we're seeing is the effects of sort of Jim Crow and racism and white supremacy. And then how do we navigate that and go beyond that to, to innovate and make lives better for other people? And so, you know, for me, like, the, the whole concept of a legacy really didn't hit me until I started to understand my history. And so I ended up like I have a variety of family um, across the country, mainly in Chicago and, and really in Arkansas. And it wasn't until I actually applied to the University of Arkansas and they asked um, they asked, like, what is your your connection to Arkansas that I actually was forced to dive deeper into um, what that history was. 
And I was familiar with it because we have family reunions all the time, but I really didn't know until that point. And it was just really interesting what I actually found. And so what I found is that um, my family goes back seven, eight generations in the state of Arkansas specifically, but they have a history prior to that. And, and that really intersects with the, um, with the history of slavery in this country and within my family, right? So I found out that, you know, my great, 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 great grandparents um, were slaves in Virginia in the 1800s, and then they were brought over to Tennessee by a slave trader, and they just stayed there for like 30, 40 years. And then when they were freed, they actually moved to Arkansas to become, uh, become farmers. And so from when they were freed as slaves till, you know, my great grandparents age, they were, they were in Arkansas, you know, just trying to make things navigate the, the realities of being black in America. And through all that, right, they worked hard. They, they did all the things they were supposed to do. But, you know, the reality is that Jim Crow existed, slavery existed, and, you know, discrimination and racism existed. And they fell subjected to that. And so they worked up, they had land, they all had all that stuff. And then they lost it because of just the discriminatory practices that we're starting to sort of like become more aware of now, right? Like black farmers losing their, losing their crops and not being able to get funding, all that stuff. My family went through that. And so being, uh, being aware of that, it's like, okay, you know, like, you know, I come from a long line of, you know, workers. I come from a long line of innovators. I come from a long line of entrepreneurs. And so for me, it's a, it's a duty for me to continue doing the work and pushing the envelope because this is what they set out to do and this is what they continue from slavery. And so it's like, I wasn't a slave, but if they were able to do it, then it's in my genes that I can do it too. And so from there, like they overcame stuff to the point where they, they worked even harder. They even purchased more land and that land ended up getting, uh, you know, getting the option to the government for, for use cases. And stuff. So from there, we ended up. Um, my great grandfather, he like during World War II, he was a great project manager. And so from there, he uh, had the opportunity to come to California to start setting up many of the internment camps that were around there. And so uh, from there, my family ended up in California, and the rest was history after that. And and so for me, I only knew the stuff up into California, but. Uh, through this process of applying to medical school and learning more about my history, it really uh, instilled more convictions to where I, this is this is the pathway that I want to go to have an impact because my family had an impact on other people's lives and I want to continue that. And so, you know, what, like from this from this sort of realization and awareness, right, like it, it's really started to come back to like that idea of a legacy and you know, when I think about a legacy, I ultimately have to think about what is the thing that I can do as a black person in America that can push the envelope for not only others that look like me, but others that probably have a misperception of, you know, the people that that see me, you know, they see me with the afro, they see me, you know, not as white. And so like, they'll have a they'll have a preconceived notion. But when they see my work, they'll be like, oh, okay, this is not what I thought a black person can do. Right. They might think that black people can play sports and play football and all that stuff, but they're not thinking that they develop AR apps, that they animate, that they go to medicine, that they heal people. Um, and so I with my work and my body of work, I really try to see like what is the at the end of the day, like what is the what can I do to challenge those preconceived notions? And, you know, ultimately, it, it's really this whole idea of a legacy is about just overcoming adversities in our life, you know, as part of that journey, right? Like, there are many times that I was told no, and by me proving them wrong, then that let that leads me to just have another milestone in that legacy. And, you know, over over the time, I, I've, I've grown to be aware that, like, with my history, the history of black people in this country, uh, a lot of it is deep valleys, you know, and there's a lot of people saying you can't reach it to reach that mountaintop from that deep valley that you're in. And and the journey is is proving them wrong. And and we've done this time and time and time again. Uh, when it comes to the field of medicine, this is uh, I applied three times and I and so I've gotten rejected essentially three times from many schools. Yeah, uh, I think this last time I applied uh, to 30 schools. 
and I got into two of them, but that meant that I got 28 additional rejections. And so, you know, you multiply that times three and that's almost a hundred rejections. Uh, but at the end of the day, those people that told me no in the, in the past and even in the present are confronted with the reality that like, I'll still be down that path because I got accepted someplace. And so all it takes is just one yes and one opportunity. And then that can provide you a landscape for that legacy. And, you know, the, the interesting thing about it is that like, no one's sort of holding my hand or nobody's, you know, pushing me down this path. The thing is that, you know, this is all my choice. Like I have the freedom and liberty to do whatever I want down this path. And, you know, me understanding my history, me understanding the legacy of my family, me understanding the impact that I could have on other people if I continue this work. That's what that's what drives me down this path. And, you know, it's I, to me, I think it's really fun because this is this is something that I'm doing things that I never like my parents didn't even think was possible. And so I'm having conversations with them of like, hey, this is what I came up with and this is what I'm going to do. And I just want to show you because it's cool. And they'd be like, I don't even know where to start with this. You know, like this is wild. And I'd be like, I know, like it literally just came up with this. And so, you know, the, the reality is for me, right? Like at first it was just like, okay, growing up, you know, coming up uh, in my family was like, okay, I want to go to college. I want to play on TV. I want to do all that stuff and, um, and make it to the pros. Right. And I did that. Right. Like I was major division one college football, made plays, broke passes, like was on ESPN. Like I did that. Like that was me. Then when I finished, I was like, okay, you know, I'm an artist. I like this. I like doing, you know, cool stuff. So, you know, I'm going to just put my put myself out there and just start creating ideas, right? Hello. And so Hi. I did that. Hi. Sorry. Watch this. Hold on, I got Like a lot of the, a lot of the work that I've done was uh a lot of the work that I've done was really focused on uh creativity, special effects, you know, explosions, doing all this green screen work, um, visual effects that you would see in like a Marvel movie, but incorporating uh, black identity and black creativity and black comedy into it. And so, you know, in the picture, it's like, you got uh, Rip Michaels, who just had a, who just now got a show with stars. Um, we have Michael Blackson, which everybody sort of is familiar with at this point. And then we have Brandon T. Jackson, who's, you know, if you're familiar with any of the Percy Jackson series, um, you know, I worked on a lot of projects with them to just sort of explore the ideas of, of what black creativity can look like and with visual effects and, uh, and modern technology. And so then, you know, after I was sort of, you know, got used to that, then I applied to medical school. And, you know, the, the journey with that is just like there's nobody in my family that applied to medical school before. You know, I literally, I know more people that got drafted into the NFL than that be, than applied to medical school. So for me, it's more likely that I can get, I can be an NFL player than be a doctor. And so I really wanted to confront that and say like, okay, what, what is the things that, you know, I can do to, to push, to disprove that reality. And, uh, you know, took years, it took grit. It took a lot of things that, that, you know, like I'm very familiar with, with my, um, you know, with just understanding my family history and, you know, put myself out there, made that choice. And, and I got that end result in return, um, you know, being a medical student. And so that, that's sort of a new path that I'm excited to explore. I don't necessarily have a reference point for it, you know, compared to like the NFL. Uh, but it, it's a, it's an interesting journey that like, I don't think my, my, my ancestors like really actually thought was possible. Um, it was more of a dream than an actual reality. And then, uh, and then more importantly, I think the more immediate thing is that, uh, with the work that I've done in the immersive technology space with AR and VR, um, it's, it's generated a lot of attention. Um, mainly because I, all I did last year, my goal last year was as I started to learn and see all the stuff that was happening and, uh, because of COVID and how um, AR and VR are starting to pick up. 
the stuff that I was seeing on the internet just showed me that there was a potential there. The interesting thing about it was that I, every video that I saw, every article, um, did not have black people in it at all. It was no references. It was like out of sight, out of mind. And so for me, the only thing that I wanted to achieve last year was if somebody looked up a YouTube video uh, on YouTube, they would they would they can Google AR augmented reality and they will see they'll be able to find a black person doing it. And I think that just the this the sheer existence of just seeing somebody do it that that doesn't look um, like the traditional developer. Um, does speaks volumes uh, in and of itself, even if you're not doing anything, you know, life changing. And so for me, I saw that, you know, just by being the, being on the Internet as the black AR guy, you know, just the black guy on YouTube that uh, that does AR stuff, uh, I think it would have an impact. And and the interesting thing that happened a couple months ago is that, like, I just started doing it, making YouTube videos, uh, posting stuff on Twitter, no industry you know, no industry knowledge, anything like that. I'm just exploring it. And then I just get a call from the Wall Street Journal who's like, hey, you know, like the stuff you're doing is really having an impact and we want you to be a part of this uh, this festival. And it, it's it, it all started for me just making that choice and saying like, okay, you know, if I were to apply to a job and say, oh, I want to be an AR developer, I did that, got rejected, got denied, didn't get calls back. But me just put myself out there and saying, this is what I do and this is what I'm interested in. And this is what I have to offer to the industry. Um, and I'm not going to shy away from who I am and my identity. Uh, that is what people that is what people are attracted to. And and so, you know, the I think the the thing that I sort of go back to with a lot of these things that I sort of as I go back to this slide, uh, the thing that I kind of go back to the the overall idea of like, what is my ancestors wildest dreams? And my ancestor's wildest dream is just existing in a way that you don't have to compromise your identity and your blackness to be successful. And uh, the thing that I like really appreciate is that for them, just existing as black people in this country uh, came with consequences that had negative ramifications. Uh, and so for me, it's like me not shying away, away from that, addressing that and taking that head on with that acknowledgement. I know that any path that I do being unapologetically black um, and finding success in it is exactly what um, is exactly what um, my ancestors wished and dreamed that they could do. And so uh, and so with that, you know, I it's great to be connected. Uh, you know, shout out to Dr. Junkins for connecting me with all this stuff and uh, and helping me along the way. And, um, you know, I, I, I really hope all of you have. Uh, you know, you you all enjoy the enjoy the COVID times because uh, in many ways it's allowed us to slow down and and really uh, reflect on a lot of things and uh, and hopefully from there when things open back up we're able to hit the ground running uh, with the with the pep in our step and so uh, that that's my time uh, I appreciate it and I hope that we uh, continue this this wonderful journey and so that was that you know hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully it was uh, something that was inspiring to you. Um, hopefully my, my story just resonates. And if you've been following me for a while, uh, I feel like I say the same like five things over and over again. But, um, but I think that's just because this is where my, this is where my convictions lie. And, um, you know, until things change, until things get better, I don't, I, I don't see myself, you know, changing my approach in this area because you know, this approach is what got me here. And this is talking to people. This is the approach that they, you know, appreciate seeing. And um, yeah, you know, it, it's for me, it's about it's about just having an impact in people's lives in a positive way to just overcome and, and just offset just all the just trash nonsense that that, you know, people are just subjected to go through, uh, whether it be interpersonal, institutional, all that different stuff. And so, you know the drill, right? Like, I, I suppose, uh, since I'm, you know, a, a YouTuber or whatever, podcaster, I'll say subscribe, you know, click the like bell or whatever. Um, but, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I feel very fortunate 
to be in this spot to be able to give back in a in a meaningful way and um and from there just seeing the support to just continue doing what i doing what i do and and that's all i ever asked for was just an opportunity and uh and seeing that the opportunity is there now it's like i got to deliver right and so um appreciate everything all the support from everybody uh check out pdx black rose check out black superheroes matter check out shop.iltopia.com uh support me on patreon at patreon.com slash iltopia you know uh the goal for me now is to you know just not it's to it's to pay for medical school i mean that i think that was the goal from the beginning you know being an artist to pay for medical school but like now it's like that's the thing now like it's not just perspective like that that's the thing now and so uh so support my support my medical school fund i appreciate it and uh and look out for more stuff uh, it's just i'm excited to you know go down this path with you all yo 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 this is steve from stuck on an island i definitely appreciate you taking the time to check out my work follow me on all the social nets be sure to check out my studio iltopia on all the other platforms and if you want to get some merch check out shop.iltopia.com